What is up, y'all? It says we are live. That means we made it back to another Wednesday Random Topics live chat. So, how is everybody doing halfway through this week? It sucks for a landscaper in Ohio. I can tell you that most likely. If you're a landscaper in Ohio, you've had a rough week. So, I'm literally out of breath from running and tripping to get myself over to this room like I always do. I just ate my dinner. And, yeah. So, here we are. Everybody's got some different things, get notifications and stuff to roll in. So let me go over here and kind of take a roll call, see who was here on the side first, and then we'll get back to our formal introduction. So Charles Nemitz was in here really early, said, hello, everyone. What's up, Charles? How are you? He was in here at 846. And then Jeff H. was also in here. Tactical Rabbit was in here. Might still be in here. Tactical Rabbit said, hello, Turkey. Nation, welcome and keep it civil. Good advice. And Jeff H says, Come on, man. Tactical rap is talking back. And Michael Bonaventura is here. Hi, TTO, and everyone. What's up, Michael? Anonymous F says, Howdy, fellas. Jeff H says, Hi, Michael and Anonymous. And Carbon Spider's in here. What's up, Carbon Spider says, Howdy, Pulse. Good evening. Well, what's up? Shane44 Mag is in here. Said, what's up, people? Jeff H is in here. Talking to Carbon. I already said Jeff H. And what else do we got? Anonymous F says, do any of you have your comments disappear on YouTube? Man, that frustrates the heck out of me. Post a big comment and it just poof, gone like a fart in the wind. Absolutely. Happens to me all the time. Happens to me on my own videos when I try to respond to your comments sometimes, which I need to do. I'm sorry. I've been slacking. Absolutely. I've been slacking on that. But um, yeah, even comments that I post on Trigger Bars videos and Brad Branch videos and whoever, uh, Shasta Bean, <laughs> I think there's videos that I put comments on. And then even amongst ourselves, you know, they're clean, they're friendly comments and nope, they won't let them go through. And then I can't even see them. Uh, they just disappear in the background. So Usually there's a section for hidden comments, they call them, and it's where YouTube puts what they deem questionable, possibly comments. They want you to review them. But every time I go there, it's it's 90% of the time I go there, uh, it's empty. They just clear it out all the time. They're supposed to hold them for like 90 days or 60 days, but it's always cleared out. I don't understand, or I'm looking at it wrong, maybe. So Ron Toomey's shouting out, home, ugh, howdy. Casey Two Gun said, don't distract me. I'm building 10 millimeters. Ooh, nice. That is awesome. And what else? Stephen M. Mann said, hail, hail, the mountain man is here. What's up, Stephen? Tactical rabbit, gobble, gobble, turkey. Yeah, I was a minute or two late. Like I said, I was stumbling on over here. Trigger bar philosopher is in here. Evening TTO. Hello, my fellow gobblers. What's been up, trigger bar, with your lineup of videos you've been dropping? Disastrous Effects. Good evening, TTO. Hello, all. What's up, Disastrous Effect? Carbon Spider is not talking to me. Michael Lakota says, howdy, y'all. What's up, Michael Lakota? And what else do we have? Gort is in here. What's up, Gort? And Stephen M. Mann said, is that a Brownells behind you? Absolutely is. BRN601. The greenie. Uh, yeah, that one's pretty sweet. I really like that one a lot. I need to do a couple things to it that I want to just personalize it a little bit more. But yeah, it's got the retro optic on it when they were marking them retro, which really stinks because now they don't mark them retro. And I would really like to have the one that doesn't say retro across the top of it. I'll correct that somehow someday. I'm not into the complete has to be 100% authentic thing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have that. But there's a couple of things I'd like to do to it. I really missed out on some furniture. There was a run of, you You might know this, um, they brought into the country some Puerto Rican parts kits uh, from the Puerto Rican police departments down there. They were using those 601s and they had the awesome hand guards and butt stocks and, and grips. They had that chip painted over brown. I mean, it was, it was the green painted over brown. It was the authentic, like absolute awesome stuff. And it wasn't that expensive. I can't remember. It came with a chopped piece of receiver or something. Um, so it was a build kit. But, I mean, you get the real furniture on that thing. And I had no idea that ha was happening. It was during the coughing session we all went through. And so I wasn't expecting anything like that. And I wasn't looking for it. 
I can't remember who they sold it through, but man, was I irritated when I found out. And it was something, you know, it was in the reasonable price range to purchase. And once it hit the collector's market, they were not reasonable anymore. But yeah, awesome little gun right there. I was just shooting it the other day. I'm not that good with that 4X scope. Um, if anybody knows any really good tricks to that 4X scope, let me know. Um, I got, I barely use it at the moment. So I peep through underneath it and use the peep sights a lot. But and up close, that scope is good. I just need to figure out my holdovers with it. I assume it's like any other scope. I just haven't really played with it too much. 4X. So anyway, Timothy Butson says, hey, everyone. What's up, Timothy Butson? So I was in here by now. So let me take a quick pause just to tell everybody what this is all about. If you've never been here before, it is just what it sounds like it is. It's a random topics live chat. Talk about anything we want to talk about. Doesn't have to be guns or gun related. Um, just here to have fun and see what everybody's up to halfway through the week. And I'll go on a rant or two probably throughout the video. Like the cars racing down the road. So I can't talk to you guys. But yeah, just say whatever you want. It, just keep it clean. And if you've never commented before, then now's a you know awesome time. We like to hear from new people. A lot of people hide in the corner and never say anything, but say hi at least if you want. If you want to keep totally anonymous, we understand. Just like this guy right here, Anonymous F, says, oh, I have some not-so-friendly comments on some of these, but I wish I could see them. LOL. Comments, not-so-friendly comments on some of these. On some of what? What are you talking about? Anyway, I've already lost track of what you're talking about. And... Jeff H says, I'll talk to you, TTO. <laughs> Carbon Spider said, TTO, did a storm go through your house? I know there was some good ones. Not through my house. Um, there were some storms that went over my house. Prevented me from doing all the mowing that I really wanted to do, so that was annoying. And did Will wants to know, did I grab the 9mm from PSA? No, I did not because the next day I was, I can't remember what happened. I got distracted and I went back the next day and I think it had free shipping and then it was that awesome price. Then the next day it was back up to like 400 banana leaves and no free shipping. So I got irritated and uh, I found it somewhere else with the range bag and the seven magazines. But then I did the math and I'm like, eh, so now I'm stuck on the fence because there is another one I found for 350 and I really want to buy it, but I also have other things I need to spend my money on. Um, that was, we've been, I'll tell you what, me and the wife have been penny, penny pension as far as groceries and stuff, because I think everybody can agree that food is just ridiculous because our economy sucks. And uh, yeah, so penny pension like crazy, but still, even with penny pension, going to Aldi's and stuff, this is a little side rant. God, just going to Aldi's for some of the things and then going to Wally World and picking up what you have to from there as far as just other things you need to live. But not living great at all, like as far as buying high end stuff and still paying out the butt for it. So now I can't hardly justify spending money on guns right now. I got to get a little bit more rolling in the landscaping season, but still, I don't want to pass that up, that deal. Um, so I might go ahead and do that anyway. Just after saying I should be responsible, I will probably be irresponsible. And then I missed the 10 millimeter. I told you guys I need the 10 millimeter, a new one. I like, I need it. It's something I have to do. And, uh, I missed that one that had the range bag and the extra magazine. That one was for a worth it price for sure. And I missed that one. So I've been missing the deals. And now I'm preoccupied with work, which will be the next rant here pretty soon. Disastrous effects at TTO. I know you didn't check your email or you would have seen the subject line. I, did, I do need to check my emails. I do need to. Sorry. <laughs> I will get to that. I got to check a bunch of work emails. And then YouTube emails. Anonymous F says, is there any advantage to a CNR firearm? Can you SBR or SBS one without a stamp? I have no idea. I've never done CNR. Um, what he's talking about is Curio and Relic. It's a special license you can have so that guns that are a certain age and type, I believe, can uh, usually be shipped directly to you. You're kind of like a mini FFL for collectible firearms. Uh, that way you don't have to go through the the whole transfer process. So 
a CNR license is what you'll see a lot of times on the auction sites. They'll say no CNR or we do accept CNR. Just it's what the seller is willing to do as far as transferring the firearm. So guns after a certain amount of years are eligible for CNR. Curio and Relic. Uh, so I don't know anything about that though, other than what I just told you. I would not think that you would be able to easily convert them over because then they would just become under one of the other things that they take issue with. Trigger Bar Philosopher says, something not to me. Graybeard's in here. What's up, Graybeard? Says, hi, Turkey. Hi, all. Hope you all, all ooh, hope you are having a great week. You as well, Graybeard. Yeah, it's not a bad week so far. It's just a lot of work, intense work. Beginning of spring for the landscaper right now. I live in one of those climates that we actually have like four seasons. And when spring booms in Ohio, it booms. The grass goes bananas, and then everything turns green at once, and everybody wants everything done at once, and all of the customers go bananas. Sunfish for Fish says, y'all need to go fishing. I totally agree with you 100%. I think there should be a day a week dedicated to fishing. Um, I really like to bass fish. I don't go on rivers and Stuff like that. I used to go ice fishing every now and then, but pretty much I just like the bass fish, small ponds or big ponds if the bass are easy to get to. I don't like going out on boats. I don't because I don't have a boat. So I'd rather just be able to fish from shore, but I do like fishing a lot. I would fish for other things, but I don't like the ponds near me and everywhere I've grown up, they are very limited. We always have bluegill, you know, various size sunfish all over the place. They're everywhere. But, um, a little bit of crappie here and there. Um, bass, of course, of various types, including rock bass. Uh, I like those. Those are cool. Those will hit on a rock bass will hit on a crawfish, a live crawfish, like every time. They cannot resist it, in my opinion. Um, what else? Every now and then you'll catch it. You can go catfishing a lot around us, um, for sure. If you go out on the lake, if you go up north, then you're going to end up doing all kinds of walleye fishing and perch fishing, but I don't go out on that lake. So that's my extent of fishing. The rivers, I don't even know what's actually in the rivers. Tactical Rabbit is putting up some emojis here. He's got a problem with poop in the wind that's making him want to gag. He's maybe, are you passing gas? Is that what's going on over there? Or is somebody passing gas near you? Is this a cry for help or like you need do you need a welfare check? Is something going on? What's is somebody holding you in a gassy situation? I'm sure anybody that wants to try to go ahead and interpret that. And if it's urgent, let us know. Signal us somehow. Other than that signal. AC2 gun says my calipers are off. They're telling me my 10 millimeters are one centimeter. That's a big problem. That's uh, that one millimeter is or one centimeter is way, way too big. You don't you don't want to deal with that. So the metric system is pretty easy. So I can get it why the world uses it, but I'm just so not used to it. I like things to be complicated in our system, but metric is really easy. Things stack up pretty easily. I just don't understand it. I don't know. In my mind, for the life of me, I cannot understand what a kilometer looks like or feels like because I know miles. I know how to travel in miles. And I really know miles because I know racehorses a little bit. And I know the mile racetrack really, really, really well. So it's hard for me to ever understand a kilometer. When I go to Mexico, they start talking kilometers. The cars are in kilometers, speed limit in kilometers. It's just, it's all wacky which I haven't been to Mexico for a long time, but kilometers are wacky. Oh, milliliters and stuff. That's that's a different story. That's easy. Trigger Bar Philosopher is giving a thumbs up. That's a good idea. I always like those. Thank you, Trigger Bar. That reminds people to give thumbs up. Just don't hit it twice or it goes thumbs back down. Sunfish for Fish says, get that garden going. Absolutely. We're started for sure. We got a bunch of stuff in the ground. I don't know how many of you guys actually do a significant amount of gardening. A lot of people do a, you know, a tomato planter, a pepper planter too, and that's gardening. But um, 
some people are really, really dedicated to getting the max yield that they can. So we're kind of, it's always ever evolving, but we're figuring out how to get things in the ground earlier and earlier because you can put a lot of things in the ground pretty easy. And then when they're getting harvested or changing over, then you can plant other things. And we always do like what's called succession planting. So you just keep growing every weekend. You go out there and put another couple rows of lettuce or whatever you're planting. Every every month you go out there and put another row of carrots. Um, so you reserve some space back. That way you always have a nice harvest coming in. And some things like kale, they overwinter. So anybody that's thinking about gardening, it's actually really good, especially now because you got to save money. So a garden is absolutely your best friend. If you grow up a whole crap load of tomatoes, then you'll be able to make all kinds of sauces and stuff out of it. It's not that hard, really. Timothy Butson says, at TTO, but then he didn't say anything else. So I'm sure he'll get back to me on that one. And Casey Two Gun says, by the way, I got a TSS Yukon 10 millimeter commander. I did it because my dealer is an Arsh. Did it because my dealer, you got a, how did you, I don't understand. So you didn't want that model? Disastrous Effect says, Casey, did you let him talk you into it? And Anonymous F says, hey, you turkey. I've been making an art out of saving money on groceries lately. I made like 10. Hershey chocolate bars for about two fifty, dollars melting semi-sweet chocolate chips spread on a sheet pan. That's a really good idea because actually the uh, we've been eating the, all these chocolate chips. Like we eat candy like crazy. We eat chocolate. So the chocolate chips are really good from all these, like to make cookies with and stuff. And uh, we've just been eating handfuls of chocolate chips as kind of like our chocolate go-to treat for the moment. And they mix good with yogurt. And you can put them on ice cream and stuff like that. So yeah, if you melt your own chocolate chips, that's a good idea. They want way too much money for everything. The freaking slim, eh, shrinkflation. I almost said slimflation. The shrinkflation on stuff is bonkers. When you feel some of these items in the bags, the chips that they've taken things away from, and this, oh my God, you're paying so much money now for things, and they're taking things away. Things that all, like, whatever it is, Swiffer pads that had 12 in them might have 10 in them now, things like that. You just, it's ridiculous. Everything costs so much, and... Candy is one of them. The candy bars got a lot smaller. I don't know if you guys noticed that this Halloween. If any of you have kids and you rated their Halloween candy, um, like I know some, I have some family members that are young and I was around when they were around with their bags and I couldn't believe it because I was yanking into them and I was sampling things from this bag and that bag and this bucket and that bucket. And yeah. It's not <laughs> nowhere near what they used to be. When I was a kid, they had chocolate bars. When I, you know, when my kids were growing up, there were chocolate bars. Now these things are like tiny little pieces of a Snickers bar. And no. Anyway, there's a little rant. Because I like really, I really like ugh, candy. How about ice cream? What about the price of ice cream? That's a sad one. Anonymous F says, got to keep them ice cold because they melt fast. That's all right. But he says, but they're delicious. I bet they are. Oh, no. Timothy Butson, don't. He says, I'm having a turkey pot pie for supper tonight for the channel tonight. Thanks. Timothy, why would you do that? That's. We might have to do some turkey pot pie here soon at my house because I got one of my turkeys as an eye problem. We're trying to fix them up. But hopefully that doesn't keep going. And Greybeard says 55 miles per hour is 88 kilometers per hour. See, I've heard that rule before, but I'll forget that rule as soon as we're done talking. That, that's, those rules never stay in my head. Um, but it's interesting to think about it like that. Um, it would be so weird because I'm so used to the speed limits and the way I drive now. I was just talking to that, talking to somebody about that today. I cruise a lot of places. A lot of the streets near me are, well, a lot of them are, of course, are, you know, you've got to help the whole spread. But the majority of the big long roads by me are 55 or 45. So I'm very used to cruising at either one. So then when I get on the highway... It's almost hard for me because I don't, I rarely go on the highway unless I really have to. I just don't like to. 
So when I do get on the highway, it feels like, God, I'm going so fast because I'm just so used to cruising at 45 or 55. I never want to get pulled over. So I go this normal speed limit. And yeah, it's weird to get on the highway and everybody's mad as heck going 80, 90 miles an hour. But I can do it. The wife's car is a fast little booger. If I get in that thing, then I can definitely drive a little bit. But I'm so used to pulling around a trailer at 45 miles an hour. TTO, some river, some of the rivers around you are good fishing, walleye, salmon, perch, and a lot of white bass. White bass? Huh? Yeah, I was river fishing one time with my stepdad a long time ago, like when I was a kid. One time. Anonymous F says, you do any handicapping on those equines, turkey? Heck no, I do not bet on horses very often. I, uh, I mean, never anymore. But if I were to go to a track now, and pick up a program and or a racing form and try to go ahead and do a little bit of handicapping i could probably take a hundred dollars and uh, there's a 50 50 chance i would leave with a hundred dollars um it's i don't know or i'm gonna go broke or i might make a little bit i've never really been a super big gambler i don't take big risks so i have family members that i've watched go totally broke with gambling so nope I work with horses rather than gamble on them. Tactical Rabbit says, okay, I'm back. Bathroom doing number two. Got a gas and the other one followed it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Casey Two Guns says, yes, he knows what I really want. He already made me buy two legions. Oh, oh. those are not cheap. Disastrous effects says, dang, y'all making me feel guilty. I threw caution in the wind and funded a gun trust with 10K last week. Ooh, nice. <laughs> do what you gotta do. Support your own, support your own gun habit for sure. Get it, get it got get it rocking and rolling. I'm gonna do a video about how to make your gun list and how to make your gun list dreams reality. Um, there's a there's a method to it, and you just have to you have to be diligent about collecting the guns that you want. You have to get them before they're gone or you're going to pay more when you want them later. And there will be a hole in your heart if you don't get what you want. So yeah, I'm going to do a video on that. Anonymous F says, yes, the price per pound of beef jerky is more than lobster and filet mignon. I have not bought beef jerky from anywhere in a long time. There's no way. It's, that stuff got so expensive a few years ago. Trigger Bar Philosopher says, Casey's, nah, it's not talking to me. Will says, I couldn't afford the 9mm XDM either. Instead, I ended up buying a TC Patriot kit purchased in the 80s. What is that? TC Patriot? I can't remember what that is. But I really want that Springfield. I just, I don't know if it's just, the reason I want it, here, oh, here's why, why I want that gun. Because it's got to be super accurate, in my opinion, because the 10mm is so accurate. So if you're going to have a 9mm, have a very accurate 9mm. You're going to have, like, I think a 14-round magazine, maybe 13-round, whatever it is, 13 or 14 plus one. So that's adequate. It's not up there with the rest of them, 17 plus one, but it's still pretty adequate. However, you can get, like, the 22-round magazines that I believe will flush fit with all the backstrap part. That's 22 rounds. That's pretty darn good. Heck, you can get a 50-round stick magazine that actually Springfield makes if you want to. So you can do all that, um, and it should be awesome, accurate gun. If it's anything like the 10 millimeter. It should run any kind of ammo, and uh, the U-notch sights actually do work well. They're quick to get on target and all that other stuff. So, and it should have ultimate, just ultimate reliability, ergonomics. I really like it. But is it better than an M&P for me? It's I don't know because I really like M&P. So, is it going to be better than a Glock for most people? No, I don't think. I don't think if you like a Glock, you're not going to like the XDM. If you like an M&P, you're not going to like the XDM. Or I don't think you would prefer that one over one of the other two. So for me, I really like the 10 millimeter because nobody has the 10 millimeter correct, the 10 millimeter correct. But to be honest with you, if I most likely, if Smith & Wesson made their M&P 10 millimeter just as good as the XDM Elite is, like if they were head to head, just as reliable, just as shootable, just as accurate, just as recoil dampening, just, just as perfect, then I would rather have the M&P because I'm very much more used to M&P. It's what so many of my other guns are in, and I just like M&P. I don't like Smith & Wesson half the time, but I really like the M&P 1.0 and 2.0. So 
would I carry the spring or even need the Springfield XDM Elite in nine millimeter if I had, or in 10 millimeter, if I had a perfect one in Smith & Wesson? Probably not. But due to Smith & Wesson having such a failure with their 10 millimeter is what drove me to buy the XDM Elite. And then we discovered together on the channel that it is an absolutely awesome fire. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. I don't really think I even need it. I just want it. So there's there's what I'm talking about. And that's what I'll talk about in this video is prioritizing. So you have to prioritize first your wants versus your needs. You have to take care of your needs in the gun department before you take care of your wants. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on things that you need. They'll become unavailable. It'll just happen, period. Graybeer said, Casey, let us know how that tea sauce runs. The tea sauce. And Tactical Private says one mile equals 1.6 kilometers. See, that would throw me off so bad. I mean, I guess in in very um, in the short run, you could do the math in your head and just be off by a little bit, kind of, as far as trying to figure out a mile versus a 1.6 kilometer in reality, visually, but as soon as you take into consideration more, you know, like 10 kilometers, then you're gonna start getting weird, I think, maybe. Could just be me. Some people have done it more than they've done the mile system, and I'm sure they think completely different. Disastrous effects, and I started a gun trust for my guns and future NFA items, so it's not a headache for my son. Yeah, I've thought about the exact same thing about a gun trust, just so keep them all in the family. I don't, I got to do more research. Roger, Roger Ray's giving a double thumbs up. What's up, Roger Ray? How are you? Michael Lakota says, spread clover seeds in my food, ugh, food plot yesterday. Perfect timing for the storms that went through. Got it all watered in. There you go. Get the deer sin. Trigger bar philosophy. I need, I need to make a food plot. I, I could. I, I really need to. I just never have time to do it. Trigger Bar Philosopher says, ah, gotcha, and added 10K worth of your guns to it. And TTO, when are the 17 HMR videos dropping? Hopefully very soon. It's been kind of weird weather here, so hopefully very soon. I really want to get that gun on camera for you. So much fun to be had with that. It's absolutely my one of my favorites. Disastrous effects says, not for me. And Casey Two Gun says, How can you collect gun without reading emails? How can I collect gun? What guns? What? I do read some emails, it's responding to emails. That's my problem. <laughs> Actually, when I don't have the money for guns, I won't read those advertisements. I don't let them, well, usually, I don't let them affect my brain. Roger Ray's given the double thumbs up. Or no, the double fist bump this time. Stephen M. Mann said the TC Patriot is a side lock muzzle loader pistol. Anonymous F is saying, I don't know if you like olive salad or mufalada, mufalada salad, but I made about three jars of the stuff for about 15 bucks with my food processor, usually 11 bucks for 100 and, or for one 32 ounce jar in my area. Love mufaletas. It sounds really good. I love, I love olives. So I like, anytime I've seen that kind of stuff, I like it. I really like, um, like Greek pizzas that have feta cheese and Katamala olives and red onions and garlic oil. That's some really good stuff. But no, I love olives. I was just I was just sad today because you can't find a can of olives for under two dollars in the store. And, and I'm a stubborn, I'm stubborn. I, I don't want to pay for something, I won't do it. So I usually really like to eat black olives on a saddle. I'm not on a saddle, on a salad. And uh yeah. I went to go see the horse today, and now I said saddle. Anonymous F said, hit those thumbs up, turkeys. I agree. 
thumbs up are always good. They make the YouTube world go round. And Stephen M. Mann says, okay, considering a T says 10 millimeter as... Okay, be considering a T says 10 millimeter as I like my ACP. Hmm. I need, yeah. Uh, I need to stay... I need to stay on track as far as my... Um, 1911 situation i need to not get too deep into 1911s i will one day but they're they're easy to get addicted to again yes i said again anonymous f is not talking to me <laughs> the easy way casey Tugan says easy ways one kilometer equals one click <laughs> and Roger Ray said, I picked up a rocks. I was I never heard of that. A rocks action 22 this week. Not all of that, but cool to me. I've never heard of that. Not all of that, but cool to me. Tactical Rabbit's giving me some more confusion here. 30 miles an hour is 48 kilometers per hour. 60 miles an hour is 96 kilometers per hour. Well, that's uh so. What are their speed limit? Is there speed limits generally over there? Like, oh, so we have 60 miles an hour. Would they be 96 kilometer per hour or would they just top it off at 100? Would they give you that extra little bit? Oh, Trigger Bar Philosopher says he's falling asleep. Says night all, hit that like. That's good advice and get to bed so you can get up to work. Thanks for stopping in, Trigger Bar. You have a great one. Roger Ray says phones, I think, stupid again. Phones, I think, stupid again? I don't understand. Phones, I think, stupid again. <laughs> Will says, Interstate 19 here in Arizona is signed in metric all the way to the border. Distance and speed are all kilometers. I just do 80 miles an hour and don't worry about it. There you go. That is so weird. I would not know what to do down there. Tactical Rabbit says, 45 miles an hour is 72 kilometers an hour. It's all just Chinese to me until I ever have to do it one day. And Roger Ray said, I picked up a Rossi 22 lone rifle lever action. Not all of that, but pretty cool to me. Some people like the Rossies. I know somebody else that picked up a Rossi recently and they said it was pretty cool. I believe it was a lever gun. Disastrous Effects says later TBT. And Wyoming Gun Projects in here says, good evening, all. What is up, sir? How are you and your 38 supers? Casey Two Guns says, I just finished 100 rounds of 155 grain 10 millimeter. You ate it? Like, I hope you didn't eat that. That's toxic. But if you shot it, then awesome. Or if you made it. Like if you created it, then awesome. I need to get I need to get on the 10 millimeter and 40 caliber and 40 super loading mission because I don't even have any projectiles left for it. I was going through my reloading stuff, getting ready for classes this year, and uh, I fell short on some of that. So I have, well, I'm going to fall short. Let's put it that way for the amount of loading that I want to do in 180 grain powder coated lead bullets for class. But I'll take care of that soon. Tactical Rabbit said it rained here on Tuesday all day long. Yeah, a couple days ago, it rained for a couple days. And then all my customers are calling me, absolutely complaining their brains out. KC2 Gun says he's going to shoot that TSAS with hand, hot hand loads. Awesome. Give it the test. Let us know how it goes. Because, I mean, that they got to be able to do the spread. They make ammo that's loaded all the way down for 10 millimeter, and they make ammo that's all the way loaded up. So you shouldn't really have to find the sweet spot for your 10 millimeter. They either need to standardize the 10 millimeter ammo situation. I firmly believe that that they somebody needs to come out and verbally smack these bigger companies that play in these games with loaded light 10 millimeter. It's a 40 caliber or it's a 10 millimeter. Quit playing games. Or you you need to have a disclaimer saying that this is loaded light. This is light 10 millimeter because there's a whole just weird crap show going around around 10 millimeter. But the problem is, is that if you buy a gun that's pretty much calibrated, and I'm going to say calibrated because I don't know a better word, but 
a gun that's designed around or calibrated or adjusted to, sprung to, whatever, set up for what would be light to moderate load 10 millimeter, well, then you're going to have a problem if you run something super hot. And a lot of people in for defensive situation, whether it's animal or, you know, two-legged critters, like you like to say, um, you're going to load that thing hot as heck if you want. And you're carrying 10 millimeter now. There's a lot of times you want to practice with it. You don't load it hot as heck, but you want it to be able to do what a 10 millimeter is supposed to do. You don't always have to go there, but so, yep, test it with the hot hand loads and make sure it runs all right with the training ammo, too, because that's a real problem. If it doesn't run training ammo that, you know, a lot of companies will kind of water down a little bit. Well, be careful if you're going to buy a case of something, because a lot of times it's non-returnable, hard to get rid of if you don't like it. And if it's not running in your gun. For instance, if your gun is set up to run the really hot stuff, it might not like the lights. And what we have here is Enigmatic Gwichin. What's up, brother? I haven't talked to you for a while. I need to email you back. I've been busy. Sorry. Um, but yeah, we need to talk. Not, of course, not anything bad. Um, I think we're going to have Enigmatic Gwichin on here for a chat one day. But I need to get back to him. I slacked off. Says, hi, man. Been a while. Hope you're doing well. That's pretty much what I just said, right? So, yes, absolutely. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing good. Just starting the season. And I see you were putting out some more content. I'm sure you're getting busy where you're at. You were doing a bunch of trapping. Anonymous F says, oh, yeah, you would love olive oil salad. Oh, by the way, check out Enigmatic Gwichin's channel. It's a pretty cool channel about real Alaska stuff. No baloney there. And he's a really nice dude. Oh, yeah, you would love olive oil salad, then, Turkey, says Anonymous F. Olives, olive oil, Italian seasoning, and various other veggies and seasonings. Delicious. I really would. That sounds good. I like that kind of stuff. Um, sounds like some old school stuff. Like, I, I, my grandma was a cook. She could, I am not even joking. My grandma cooked at the Julia Child, or learned how to cook at the Julia Child's cooking school, wherever the heck that was. But you know it's a good one. And, man, she made all that kind of stuff. So I know what it's like, but do I have the time to make it? No. Have you guys ever had stuffed olives? They You stuff them with, like, a ground chicken and cheese, and then they're, the olive is wrapped around it. They cut it like a spiral, but then they wrap it around it, and then you deep fry that somehow or bake them in breadcrumbs. Stuffed olives are something crazy good, like the, those kind, cooked stuffed olives, not just stuffed with a piece of garlic. Jeff H says, I got a bail too, fellas. Good night. Good night, Jeff H. Thank you for stopping in, brother. Have a good one. Hammerback says, TTO. What's up, Hammerback? Thanks for stopping in, dude. Disastrous effects. And a couple other guys are saying, take it easy to Jeff. Hammerback says, TTO, fellas. Hope everyone is well. Got to catch the stream as I'm headed to bed. Well, get a good night's sleep, or unless you're listening as you're going to bed, but get a good night's sleep. Or definitely don't. <laughs> if you, don't go to sleep listening to what we're talking about. You'll have bad dreams. You'll be thinking about all the stuff we talk about and chat about. It'll work between your head. <laughs> like tactical rabbiter. So you might not like olives. He says, okay, you guys are grossing me out talking about olives. I'm allergic to olives. How can you be allergic to olives? I didn't even know that was possible. I mean, I guess you can be allergic to anything, but that's, I've honestly never heard of that. So you mean to tell me like you can't, can you not eat olive oil? Because they use olive oil in a lot of things you would not expect it to be in. Hammerpack says, Something I was just thinking about today, actually. I'm going to pick up some Grizzly 10 millimeter after watching TTO's test, right? I Was it the 200 grain, I think? Maybe that would, one of, I can't remember which one, the 180 or the 200 grain. That was just absolutely insane. I do want to pick up some more of that for my own personal use. That is some insanity stuff right there. Casey Two Gun said, I think range ammo should shoot and recoil the same as carry ammo. Yeah, for the most part, if you're going to train with it, if you're if you're going for the whole thing of train like you would use it in real life, then yes. But there are times where you can go ahead and load things down um, just for, you know, the example would be you have a 357, but you shoot 38 special. So really, you can shoot a bunch of hot 10 millimeter. Let's say you buy a bunch of SIG uh, 
the whatever the SIG training ammo is, it's pretty good stuff. That's hot. That's hot 10 millimeter. But you can also, if your wife wants to shoot the gun, then you can throw some blazer in it. But blazer needs to put on the box, this is 10 millimeter light. Maybe they want to make a 10 millimeter adult version. But uh, in the meantime, they need labeling. So I can see the use for loading things down. And I can see the use for loading things to the top, top, not past the top, but to the top. But you got to be honest with your, first of all, you got to be honest with your advertised velocities. No shenanigans there. List the velocities. Don't just not list them. That's a bunch of crap. And be honest if it's light. If it's like nine millimeter, there's a, a light nine millimeter out there. At least there's probably, there's a light 38 special, I believe the Hornady makes. And it's for people that want light recoil. Well, it's loaded down. It's not as strong as your typical 9mm or 38 ammunition or 380 or whatever. But it needs to be labeled as such. Disastrous Effect said, even HST is lightly loaded. I only have found Buffalo Board, Sig V Crown, Winchester, Silvertip, and one of Hornady. Yeah, you can find plenty of them that are not to their potential, but. There's reasons we've talked about them before. There's there's a few different reasons for that, but yeah, it's shenanigans. Disastrous effects hit that 1,200 plus mark exactly. 200 and these companies will argue with you now. I heard an argument to this, but 200 grains at 1,200 feet per second, 1,250 possibly for uh, yeah 1,250, but um, at least 1,200. And then 180 grains different, but people argue that there was no 180 grain load. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, I don't, I don't care about the arguments about the histories of cartridges very often. I can't remember it enough to actually remember too much, but I do know that I want at least 1,200 out of it. If it, if we're going for hot 10 millimeter, so or mark it not hot. Somehow, Stephen Amman says, okay, someone complaining their brains out. Sounds like too much 9 millimeter sucking the lungs out. <laughs> Disastrous effect, Muf Eleta. Oh no, here we go. Tactical Rabbit said, Ron Spommer did a live show today, and the only round to make it through a maple log was 7 millimeter odd 8, and these were for shooting bears. I don't know what to say about Ron sometimes. And I don't know what to say about shooting maple logs. I don't know how scientific that is. But 7mm odd 8 is pretty cool. Um, but, uh, yeah. He comes up with some stuff sometimes. I'm not saying he's bad. Anonymous F says, anyone compare what a particular round does in ballistic gel versus what it does in decent-sized whitetail? Any similarities or glaring differences? Broadside shots might not be the best representation, though. Well, when you... I've shot... Let me think about this. Not, nothing scientific, like I didn't replicate the shot in ballistics gel. Um, probably something I could do or should do one day. Try to replicate the shot that I took on a deer. That would be interesting. Um, however, I think there's a problem once these rounds get into the inner guts. If you go for like the lung heart lung shot or some variant of it, it's just nothing is like nothing is not like ballistics gel because ballistics gel is just way too consistent from start to end. You're not going to get that going through a deer at all. So uh, a lot of times I will say that broadside shots, I would say, can probably penetrate more through a deer, you know, like heart, lung, heart type of thing. Maybe I'm wrong. Hammerback says, the soothing voice of TTO and the thoughts of tactical rapid, all fuzzy and allergic. Night all. And the 180s did great, I think. I think that was maybe the 180s. Hammerback, have a good night. Yeah, because I thought it was like going to get better with the 200 grain. But I don't know. We'll have to look back on that. Hammerback, have a good night, y'all. Or have a good night, sir. Will, allergic to olive pollen, but not the actual fruit. Huh. That is weird. I guess the pollen would irritate you more than anything. 
Anonymous F says disastrous effect. I can't spell, bro. Went to school in Louisiana. Ha ha. <laughs> Tactical Rabbit says I watch everything I eat for olive oil and olives. That sucks. I love them. There is a lot of olive oil and things. Graybeard says, yes, it's not about machismo. It's about truth in advertising. There you go. Yes, you're right. <laughs> it's, it's just label it what it is. It, it, but I have brought that up before that I think the gun company or the ammo company, let's say federal, for instance, they might play on this just a little bit, is that they sell 10 millimeter ammo. Okay, so Blazer or the worst offender really is federal American Eagle, Mayor, whatever, federal, whatever it is, 10 millimeter is going to be loaded very light. It's going to be loaded possibly even lighter than 40 caliber at that point. Um, so what the problem is that I think a lot of people are like, yeah, I bought a Glock 20. I, but they like to show their friends. I got my Glock 20 and I got my 10 millimeter and they, you know, it's in their mind, it's a 10 millimeter. And in everybody else's mind, oh, it's a 10 millimeter. And holy crap, you got a, you're carrying a 10 millimeter, bro. Then they go to the range and everybody's shooting a 10 millimeter and they're passing it around and uh like it's you know like it's the hot thing and everybody's shooting the 10 millimeter and they're it's kind of like it's kind of like the joke of you see people like <laughs> like uh i'm trying to think of a movie i watched a movie one time and they they gave a guy a joint and he was he thought he got high but it wasn't real so he was acting like he was super stoned until they told him like that wasn't real and then he straightened up really quick so like you kind of give somebody the 10 millimeter like whoa check out that recoil <laughs> bro i'm shooting a 10 millimeter and then you're like oh by the way that's loaded lighter than 40 caliber and then they'll be like what do you mean short and weak or, and they'll cry and poo poo and yeah you know so anyway what i'm getting at the long the short I, I need to make the longer story short is that federal relies on people wanting to shoot manageable 10 millimeter because then they can tell everybody that they're shooting 10 millimeter um, yeah, boy, we went today and ripped through 400 rounds of 10 millimeter. It cost me an arm and a leg, and it was really just 9 millimeter or 40 Smith and Wesson, but we'll call it 10 millimeter. And then you get your hands on some SIG, and all of a sudden the flinching starts and all that stuff. And we're not we're not sending them down range so fast, so accurately. Might end up with a hole on the floor or a dent in the floor or a hole in the ceiling. So that's a little side rant. Casey Two Guns says, "Tell us more about the three point or point three five five projectiles manufacturers using three fifty seven Magnum." I don't remember exactly. I have to reread that article, but from the Shooting Times article, what it, it was, oh, I can't even remember. But there was uh, discrepancies in barrel sizes, uh, and they were getting some of them were getting squeezed, and some of them were bouncing around. So that's about all I know is that uh, I can't remember the gist of it. But I will try to get back because I'll read that again. I wanted to understand it better, so. Sorry, I'm not ready for it right now. We might make a, maybe we'll make a video about it. Tactical Rabbit says hammerback. It's vomit and fever. Uh oh. Vomit and fever. Don't eat pickled pizza or uh olive pizza. <laughs> he said he yeah, he just said he picked a piece of olive off pizza and still did it. Now, of course it cooked it in there for sure. Will says, do slightly larger bullets cause higher chamber pressures in reloads, i.e. using 401 instead of 400 or five or 452 instead of 451? Well, anytime you're going to squeeze it more, I would say, yeah, if it's not, if you're going above recommended size, then yeah, it'll, it'll have a hard time squeezing through unless for some reason you've got a really loose gun. Uh, and then you got your other problems with shooting the smaller size projectiles, but I don't know. Yeah, it'll always, and it depends on where that constriction is, how far into your into your barrel. So a whole lot goes into the chamber pressure thing I'm learning, and it's just a whole lot. But yeah, that would do it. That would do something to it. Anonymous F says, I was looking at a video, the temporary wound cavity had me wondering how that would work on a human. It's maybe three inches to my heart through skin, pectoral, muscle, chest, plate, and tissue. 
Yeah, that's why there's going to be a lot of that crashing through bone effect that's probably going to make a, something not work like it worked in gel whatsoever. Um, then the gut shots and this and that would have probably more of the typical typical thing. We all have a little bit of fat though on our pector meat on our pectorals, um, so I don't I don't know. We've seen we've seen the Paul Harrell videos where things do work sometimes as intended. Um, but uh, yeah, the the bones are the bones change things a lot. And then as far as wound cavity, you're always going to have some sort of a temporary wound cavity, but I don't know if it's going to be anywhere near as dramatic as in the gel. The gel is very elastic. Just see anybody that's never worked with this gel, which probably a lot of you actually, I need to do more explaining of it sometimes. The gel is so elastic. It's crazy. Just you, you can't, you like organic gel. I don't know. I don't use that. I need to. To try some of it, but ballistics gel, the clear ballistics, it's very hard. Like you try to stab it with a knife, very hard to do. Try to rip it in half, just about impossible unless you start cutting into it. Then you can peel it in half. It's kind of like the consistency of a very large gummy bear or something like that. It might, it's not so sticky, but it's definitely, it'll tear under pressure, but um, it's very weird. So it has a lot of ability to expand. When you see us hit it with really big things like 400 Legend, 500 Bushwhacker, 500 Magnum, 12 gauge, things like that, um, these, Temporary wound cavities can get huge, like twice the size of the block, but nothing rips. And then it all, whoop. and then we've seen blocks where here's the end of the block and the bullet, you know, is traveling through the block and then it goes boink and it pokes and it goes back into the block without ever piercing the block. So very stretchy, very elastic, very weird stuff. In my opinion, nothing like fishy, nothing like thick animal hide. And there's so many different types of animal hide. I don't know what a bear hide is like at all. I don't know what many like i only know what deer hide is like i know what we're made of i know what animals are around me but i do know that cow hide for example is extremely thick compared to deer or human or anything like that like cow hide is thick that's why they make leather out of it cow skin and hide is crazy thick hard to cut through with a knife let alone other things disastrous effects says uh-oh disastrous effects Zach says, I call it Smith & Wesson 10 millimeter. Yeah, because there's a, there is an MP 10. That's the rifle. Disastrous Effect says, I don't get the recoil thing. I can shoot the XDM Elite all day. The Hellcat 9 millimeter beats my wrist bad. Yeah, it is. That 10 millimeter XDM is just perfect for his recoil. I think sucks it up. I don't know where the recoil dampening um, <laughs> mechanism. I don't know what exactly part of that gun does it so well, or it's just a combination. but. Does it really well in most loadings. Some of them get a little bit jarring to the gun, but Will says a Gila 10 millimeter is loaded hot. It's a fireball launcher in my 3.8. Nice. Fireballs are fun. I, mean, I do enjoy them. Disastrous effect says, I have not seen a Gila 10 millimeter. I'll keep my eyes open for it. Anonymous F says, So would a round that produces a longer temporary wound cavity have a greater margin of error? Like effective, even like effective, even if impact is many inches away from vital organ. I think think 44 magnum five inches low versus nine millimeter. I would think that you'd be great, yeah, for that. That's why I always like the idea of that. If you can definitely have a, in my opinion, the shocking, the outward shock effect. Yeah, I could be totally full of crap, but I do believe that having more foot pounds of energy. And something that has a huge temporary wound cavity, the ability to push out a ton of fluid, pressure, energy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I think that's pretty important to creating shock when you're not as close as you want to be to something. An example would be many times we shoot through deer and you don't have to touch a lung very much to really damage a lung. Like you barely have to touch it with a bullet to really damage it. We're talking about hunting bullets. We're not talking about a nine millimeter. So I don't know. Um, and then there's times where you can you you just see things in the tissue where the bruises have traveled. Sometimes you can shoot a deer with a you shoot a deer with a 12 gauge in the rib cage, and that you know the hole is this big, but the blood patch, the bruising instantaneously is that big all under the skin above the rib cage. So and the ribs are all broken, and that, especially on the exit sometimes. 
Did you guys hear Trigger Bar? He posted a link to an article where Granny shot a kidnapper or a robber, whatever you want to call it, a robber. So Granny's in home at home, like two in the morning. Some guy with a ski mask and a suppressed firearm of some sort walks, parks his car somewhere and walks a mile to go burglarize her home because he thought there were valuables in that home. He breaks in, he handcuffs her to a chair, and then he starts rummaging through the house doing whatever. And in the meantime, she's wiggling her way to wherever a pillow is on a couch or the bed or whatever. And she gets it, pulls out one handed, I believe, because she's handcuffed with the other one. So I'm assuming one handed. She pulls that 357 out and puts two in his chest when he came around the corner. Uh, he returned fire and he shot her. And then the, the last time I looked, she had 11 holes in her. 11 holes. He had a nine millimeter. She had a 357. She put two in his chest. He stumbled into the kitchen and died. She had 11 holes in her. They don't know if those were all entries. They're assuming some of them were exits. Grandma held on for 10 hours until her disabled son came upstairs, as he routinely does at around noon every day. And she knew he'd be up there, so she just waited. He brought her a phone, and she was able to call for help. And she survived. And as far as I know, she will make a recovery. Now, she is a former, or possibly current still, but at least former, firearms instructor of some sort, some capacity. So she knows what she's doing. And I don't know if she had 357 loaded, but I'm assuming she might have. Uh, yeah, so it's, if it's 38, it'd be funny, but um, I believe it's 357. I can't say for sure, but from what it sounds like, probably would have been a one-stop shot. Might The two might have been more than she needed, but no matter what, he emptied his magazine. They found whatever gun he was using was emptied out i can't remember how many rounds they think he shot so not to pick on nine millimeter but we will hear for one second she, he emptied his magazine on her don't know where she was hit altogether but she survived 10 hours enough to get help and 357 two into his chest he was done so win-win for the 357 mag no casey two gun says why does flat point bullet load data load data lighter than hollow point bullets. I don't know. Uh, sometimes it all just has to do with the cannula, where that is on the bullet, how far it's going to seat down. And it's the And then the overall shape of the nose, the ogive and all that, it can determine how the seating die pushes that in, so where that will grab. And they're going for, a lot of times they're going to try to get a happy balance between magazine overall length, cap compatibility let me speak correctly and then how much case capacity they could get but certain flat point bullets are a little bit stubbier it appears than hollow point bullets so it's like for instance a hornady critical defense hollow point bullet is very pointy for a nine millimeter let's say where a flat point would be much flatter so i'm not really sure there could be all sorts of different factors but you know it's I sometimes those minute differences right there. I don't know if they make as big of a difference as they people think they do. They have, I don't know. I I think maybe you got two different people, two different situations going on when they test those loads. They might not all be tested. It might, you know, they might do a batch of testing on those flat points in 1996, and then they they carry that data, and then in 2016 they're they're putting out a recipe for a hollow point so casey two guns is not talking to me jamie aaron sanchez Cavasso says howdy guys just dropping a line have to go visit morpheus hope next week can catch you all but with a new schedule i can't assure anything have fun america well thanks for stopping in jamie we will catch you. again thanks for stopping in as disastrous effects says hey jamie and Casey Two Gun says, I fired a 357 SIG tumble upon impact in a range, and the flash was huge. What powder do they use? I'm not sure, but I didn't even know they made that for 357 SIG. I'm about to check that out. I have no idea. I think we checked that out in 10 millimeters, so I can't remember what the low light test produced for that. But we checked out in 10 millimeter for sure. Carbon Spider says, What is tough on bear? 
is the fat. There's a lot of it. When I gutted my first black bear, there was a lot of cutting through the fat before I got to the belly skin. That sounds pretty interesting. That sounds like a really interesting one to have to skin. Disastrous effects is I saw that. Granny was a badass. She fixed that turd. She sure did. And she really was. Anonymous F says that makes sense. Kind of like what Brad Branch said about blood pressure spikes many times greater than normal upon than normal upon being shot. Yeah, people try to say that that doesn't happen, but I believe it can for sure. I mean, it just makes sense, kind of. Not in all areas, but many areas, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have overpressure. You got major things going on when organs start getting compressed. When, okay, so you got to think about this. You got a, your chest cavity is rigid. Um, anything in your belly cavity might have a little bit more flex, but anything above the diaphragm, now we're talking about extremely rigid, uh, not very much give in there. You can breathe. So you can take your full lung full of air repeatedly. You got about that much space to expand. But if something, if you, let's say you've already have a lot of air in you or not, who can make, forget the air thing, but you can only expand so much in there before things start pushing into walls and this and that. I mean, that's the idea of never get head trauma where your head rattles around, your brain rattles around your head. There's not a lot of room for expansion. Your brain aren't supposed to rattle around. With your organs, if they slam across your rib cage because they've gotten expanded and pushed, or they, they've, they've shocked your diaphragm so hard that your diaphragm starts glitching out. I mean, imagine getting a Charlie horse. Bam, you get hit in your leg. You can't use your leg for a second. I don't know if any of you have ever, like, opened up your mouth to, like, you want to like pour ice in your mouth or something or whatever you're doing you're trying to eat a chipotle burrito and you ever get your jaw open too far and your jaw locks open for a second you're like holy crap that really hurts anytime you strain a muscle get a cramp in the leg imagine having all this overpressure boom in your chest cavity and that does that to your diaphragm what if all of a sudden you have a charlie horse in your diaphragm that's not gonna work out good for you so um yeah Casey Two Gun says that story reminds me of why there are so many nine millimeter survivors. Three fifty seven for the win. I mean, it's just the facts. I hate picking on nine millimeter all the time, but sometimes we really have to. And I've carried nine millimeter plenty of times. I've talked about that. I've shot it plenty of times, and I would use it. But yeah, absolutely, a lot, a lot of shootings go down. A lot of people get hit a lot of times, and sometimes, fortunately, you know, they've survived because of nine millimeter. There's a lot of good people out there that got shot, and they're still alive. Because the bad guy used a nine millimeter, or whoever, whoever the enemy is, used a nine millimeter. Um, if everybody shot everybody with a bazooka, well, every shooting victim would be blown to bits. So, <laughs> anonymous F, I agree with you. AC two gun says I loaded round nose, the hollow point, low data, and it's and I survived. Cannot tell a difference. Yeah, and many times I don't think you do. I just think it's the way they've compiled that load data. I mean, you have to pay attention to crimp, like I said, and just overall bullet shape. Maybe there's something, you know, like one might have a hollow base on it or something. Uh, not hollow base. Well, yeah, maybe even hollow base, maybe concave base. They're just taking weird things into consideration, but um, they might they might change something around if it has a cannula on it versus a no cannula bullet. Um, you know, they're they're making recommendations based on crimps. It could have something to do with what primer they've chosen. Pay close attention because depending on where you're looking at your load data, sometimes out of nowhere, you would think it would be a certain primer, and then all of a sudden they slip a mag primer in there or something weird with it. <clears throat> Disastrous effect says, I'm fading fast, folks. Y'all have a great night. We'll leave you running on the TV, but I doubt I'll be awake long. Probably me neither. I've been actually mowing a lot. I've been doing a lot of work. You guys are all fading out fast. Where's the caffeine, guys? I'm drinking all the caffeine over here on this side. Good night, Cookie, says Anonymous F. I can agree with that comment. The disastrous cookie. <laughs> Carbon Spider says, Cookie, I got a nap and a cup of coffee before the chat, so I'd be there too later, man. Uh, or I would be there too later, man. Yeah, Carbon Spider prepares. He does his napping homework before we get on. I won't keep you guys that much longer. I got one more, one more thing to tell you guys before we get out of here too much, but... Uh, my sleep schedule is all messed up, says Tactical Rabbit. Tell me about it. I've been watching Breaking Bad. I finally started walking, watching Breaking Bad. Everybody said it was good. Everybody recommended it. I'm on like season five, episode three, I think, or episode two, maybe. 
And that's been keeping me up all night because I'm an idiot. And then I had to get up and go lawn mow. And that sucks. And Michael Lakota says, heading to the nest myself, fellas. Y'all have a good night. Thanks for stopping in, Michael Lakota. We will catch you next time. You're not going to miss much. Tactical Rabbit says, sleep all day, awake all night. Ooh, he's a partier. Carbon Spider says, maybe it would be the lead, uh, maybe it'd be the lead hardness on the round nose. Could be that too. Tactical Rabbit. I'm still thinking about Tactical Rabbit being up all night. I wonder what he's doing. They say nothing goes, um, nothing good happens past midnight or something. Somebody says that. So I don't know. Tactical Rabbit, he's, he's probably out there keeping an eye on that Tactical Rabbit that's always trying to sneak up on his porch. Carbon Spider says, maybe it could be the lead hardness. I already said that. Yeah, it could be. I know they change things around for pure lead versus, you know, coated or plated or full metal jacket. AC Two Gun says, I gave out $1,400 quotes all week. $1,400 quotes. Ouch. That's a lot of money. I got an $1,100 quote today for taking down a tree. Like someone gave me the quote. That's what I would have to pay to take the tree down. That irritated me. Tactical Rabbit says, I had my coffee last night. There you go. Casey, what kind of quotes were you giving out? Then here, let me let me give you guys this. I gotta say, I was gonna say this earlier in the chat, but we had a lot of good comments, so I got through those. Be nice to your landscapers, guys. I'm gonna have to give you guys that piece of advice. If you guys have landscapers that work seasonally, because you guys got like a winter where it snows, and they're just coming back online, they're just coming back to work, and like the grass is really green and it's growing really tall, and all the weeds are coming in. Don't harass your landscapers, guys. I'm lucky to be at this chat. I've been working my butt off so hard. We've had so much rain. It's so hard to keep up with the schedule. And I got all my customers, well, I'd say half of them. Half of them are giving me a little bit of pestering, but there's a few of them. I've already gotten fired from a couple. If you call it fired, I really don't care. And I've already quit a couple, so I've fired a couple. Be nice to your landscapers, guys. They don't mean it when they don't show up on time. The rain is killing us. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing is mowing grass, mowing grass, mowing grass. I got the ranges actually half torn apart. I got to put it back together. But I will be making you guys some videos. I already have some, like I said, edited, ready to go. Well, half edited. Got to get uploaded and finished. But we'll be back with some videos soon. I got to get the work done, though. Right now, it is spring and got to pay the bills. Casey Two Gun says HVAC addicts work. Ooh, ouch. HVAC is hard work. I would not want to have to do that. With that said, we're pretty much at the end of the chat. We're going to get out of here. If anybody's got any final thoughts, go ahead and throw them in. I won't keep you guys because everybody seems to be getting to bed early and needing to go to work. But it was good to chat with you guys. I like to hear your questions and hear your thoughts. And it's just good checking in with you. So I don't know what I'll be putting up next. I think I really don't know. I know there's things in the pipeline. I just don't know exactly what, because there's things I want to make before I put that stuff out. So I'll try to get back here. I'll try to get back here before Monday, but I don't know if we'll have any more live chats. Everything depends on work. I got to go to some classes uh, upcoming, so I got to continue making my ammunition. So that's a thing. So basically, I'm just telling you about my chores and why I'm being slow on my videos. So. Tactical Rabbit says, night, everyone. Well, good night, Tactical Rabbit. Anonymous F says, video of Bushwhacker at CCW class soon? I forgot about that one. Yes. Take it easy, Tactical Rabbit. I already said that. But we do need to do a Bushwhacker video. That's one of those that I want to do soon. Another one of those. Carbon Spider says, good night. All enjoyed the chat. Good night, all enjoyed the chat. Good night, Carbon Spider. Timothy Butson said, later, y'all. See you later, Timothy. Anonymous F said, good night, turkeys. See you later, Anonymous F. Tactical Rabbit says, oh, and bee stings do the same thing. That sucks. I get, I get nailed by bees quite often in my job. I hate them yellow jackets. The ones in the ground that you run over and then they get you. Ron Toomey says, good night, everyone. Good night, Ron. Thanks for stopping in. Carbon Spider says... I had a tree go down last storm, in the last storm. Guy cut it up and hauled it off. 450. Thought that was good. Man, I can't even get people to drop trees for 450 sometimes. That's a good price. Anonymous F says, triple thumbs up. 
Anonymous F, thank you, sir. And again, good night. Thanks for stopping in. All right, guys. I will see you on the next time around. I'll try to give you some updates. Maybe I'll put up a post or two poking fun at 9mm. And until then, all you guys have a great week. Stay safe out there. Don't, don't. It's getting really hot out there in some places. So take it easy. We're easing into spring a little bit. Or let's ease it into spring. Let's not go right to summer. But with that said, I'm going to press a couple of buttons and y'all have a great night. You know how it goes. Stay safe. Have fun. Final button press. Keep on shooting, y'all. See you next time.